Hello there, Ray here, and guys, I would like to show you some cool tricks that we discovered while streaming, which allows you to make these somewhat floating rails as well as ladders. Now this is a new trick to do with 1.14, and I'm here in my world where we went ahead and we obtained every single block and organized them by their size, as well as we also did this to all the entities. Really cool world, and I will link this world down in the description if you want to take a closer look at it. This allows me to do a lot of testing very easily. And what I did is went ahead and put a lot of different types of blocks which now have some unique features over here for us to test. So the way that this trick works is it's now possible to place different types of blocks that normally need to be supported on any surface that is a full square. So something like rails here normally would be able to easily go on something like this where there is a full square area for them to go on top of. And then something like this you could not put a rail on top of because it's not a full square at the top here. And something like levers couldn't be placed on this side because it's not a full square on this side, but this side is a full square so you can place a lever over there. And this same concept is now applied to pretty much every single block. So we're going to go through all the different types of blocks with different surfaces that are a full meter by meter square and see what kind of strange properties they allow us to do. So the way I built this little rail thing here is I first start out with a whole bunch of trap doors all facing up. Essentially these are very similar to like having a slab. You kind of imagine a slab here, 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 and here, and how we could easily take a rail and run them over top of all these. So by using this trick you can do the exact same thing, but also do them using trap doors. Now I did the same thing with the ladder over here. What I did is I started out with the trap door and the default state is it down on the ground like this. But if I turn it up like this, you can see we got a full surface over here to work with. And this will allow us to place ladders up against them. And since they're in a valid state, we can go ahead and even place blocks beside them and they will not update. Now in some cases when you would update this block, so let me close this trap door, you can see that the ladder will automatically pop off. But in other cases it will not pop off. And that's what I did over here with the rails. The rails actually do not update, so I can go ahead and switch this trap door to being vertical. And now we have essentially some floating rails here which you can walk through. Like the second video I ever uploaded onto YouTube was a really cool trick that I showed where you can actually make rails all be floating with no blocks underneath. A lot of people tried guessing seeing how I actually did this trick, but so far no one has correctly guessed how I made those floating rails in that video. And maybe someday I will actually share that secret with everybody. But it was a pretty cool feat and I will link the video down in the description. It was all done on 100% Vanilla Survival Server. And this change sort of remind me of that as you can kind of get these floating areas between the different ones, but it's a little bit different than that one. And one of the cool things I did with the floating rails is I actually sent minecarts from underneath and shot them upwards. And what they'll do is that when they fly upwards, they'll snap onto these rails and then continue rolling across them, which allows you to do some pretty cool roller coasters. So I'm really excited to see what type of roller coasters can be made out of this type of situation here. Now rails do update too, so you have to be a little bit careful with these. What you can do is just use other scaffolding blocks to build up your rail system, and then you can place in the rails. Now if you would actually rotate one of these and then place a rail, you can see how it will update. So essentially what's happening is this rail down here is going to update this rail, and then this rail is going to check and see if it's in a valid situation, which it's not when it's like this, and that's what would cause it to update. So if you're building this, you just got to be kind of careful and Probably start with everything in this position, and then when you're completely done, then switch everything into this position. But there's a lot more different types of blocks in the game that have a nice flat surface to apply stuff to. So if you guys don't know, repeaters are actually a full meter by meter, and this side here is actually up against the edge. And this side here is actually considered the outside edge. So if you put down like a repeater here, you can see how that is reaching the very bottom of the block limit. But when it comes to actually placing stuff onto it, if I go ahead and I shift click, you can see that it will update that repeater as soon as I put the lever on it. But the lever was actually able to get placed on it. And it just happened the way that repeaters work, they actually can update stuff up to two blocks away from them. That's why you seen the second repeater also broke off. Now I was able to do this with carpet. I used the set block command to get the carpet and then I just clicked a lever on underneath. And if I go ahead and power this, you can see that it doesn't update the carpet. It's not going to pop off because the carpet thinks he's being supported by the lever and the lever thinks he's being supported by the carpet. Now this kind of reminds me of a trick that one of the protect members Zero X showed me where you can place uh, buttons underneath of sand. Actually something that changed in 1.14, you're able to actually destroy blocks and place blocks in the exact same game tick. So you could do stuff like this where you see I was able to destroy that and place that. And obviously in creative you can instantly break stuff. You can always use like slimestone to do this. And you can even do this before 1.14. But essentially what's happening here is it's a sand. And he's not following because he's being supported by the button. The button's not popping off because he's being supported by the sand. And you can even press this button and it doesn't do anything. 
Now there's another block that is all the way to the very bottom of the ground, and that is a lily pad. But the difference is a lily pad actually is not a full cube. It's not a meter by meter. It's actually slightly smaller. So if I press myself up against it, it's different than if I press myself up against a full block here. And right here, you can see I hit 0.3 when I press up against that one. And when I press up against this one, I'm at 0.2. And because of that, you can't actually place anything underneath of it. Now a new block to 1.14 is a lectern. And the very bottom base here is the same kind of setup where we got a nice full surface and we can place levers underneath of it. Now this means stuff like shocker boxes, which are also a full cube. So they can have other types of things that need to be supported. So we got a lever on here. We got a tripwire hook, which is being supported by the side. The vine is also being supported. And we got a repeater on top, which is doing just fine. Now this shocker box can't actually be opened up because technically this repeater is in the way of when it's trying to open. Uh, here I have a shulker box that has something that doesn't actually collide. And the difference is when it's something that collides with the player, like I can hop up and down on this repeater, same thing for the shulker box. If he collides with it, he will not open. But as you know, pressure plates don't collide with the player. So I can go ahead and stand on this pressure plate. You can hear it. And then when I actually open it, my player is gonna be lifted up into the air. And when I get lifted up in the air, I will no longer be standing on the pressure plate. So let me go ahead and open this up. And you can hear that the pressure plate actually unclicked because there's nothing currently supporting the pressure plate. So you can also use shulker boxes to put anything on top of like rails or whatever you want. It can be placed over top of them. Uh, when you go ahead and you open them, you can see that since I'm not interrupting the rail, I'm able to open up the shulker box and it's not causing any problems to it. You can see that I place like a button on top of it. And if I power this button, you can see it will actually power these rails on either side of it. Now, if I go ahead and open up the shulker box, the button will actually pop off. If I put the button like this side, open it, you can see it's just fine. For some reason on this side, it doesn't like it when it's opened up. I think like the model changes or something. If I put a button on this side, open it up, you can see it doesn't cause any problems. This is kind of cool because it allows you to do more compacting. You can actually have shocker box part of your device, similar to like droppers, where you can have like different redstone going through droppers and whatnot, while still letting stuff go inside of them. So I got a trip bar hook as well as ladder and it's a redstone there. And it looks like the trip bar hook popped off when it was on this side. And I'm guessing if I put it on this side, it'll probably be safe because it's on the very far back side. Yeah, it seems to be safe there. So let's go ahead and try having a repeater pointing into that shulker box. Oh yeah, works just like a solid block. I wonder if that means it also suffocates mobs now. So let's throw a villager underneath there. Oh yeah, it does suffocate them. I wonder what happens if I open up the shulker box. Right now they're taking damage. Yeah, they're still taking damage when I open it up. So I'm guessing they're no longer a transparent block and they're probably going to also block out skylight. So underneath of it, it seems to be similar to like a leaf block where it just uh, lowers the skylight. So it's supposed to be 15 and got 12. And as I move down, it's just gonna keep going lower until it comes to zero. This is similar to like ice or leaves or water, which just diffuses the light. Now, speaking of leaves, leaves don't actually allow you to place anything on them, even though they have a full surface. So there is some exceptions to this rule. Now, if you've seen the snapshot reviews, I show that what this change also came to do with allowing different stuff to be placed on glass, which normally wasn't possible. So you could place like your ladders, your buttons, your redstone on there. Although the glass is still transparent, so you won't have to worry about it like suffocating any mobs. So whenever they have blocks like this, they're kind of unique. It allows us to do more things than if all blocks kind of had the same properties. But with this change, it also kind of changed the way that they handle some blocks. So something like soul sand, which looks like it's a full cube as each side is a meter by meter, it will no longer allow us to place stuff on top of it. So you can no longer place our rails on top of it. This means that mobs can no longer spawn on top of it. So like our witch farms, where you have the shifting floors between soul sand as well as a normal block, those will no longer work. And this is because soul sand, even though it visually looks like it's a full block, it's actually slightly shorter as if you stand over here, you can see that I sink down inside of it. And if I actually move from this block over to this block, you can actually see I move upwards, even though this block is shorter visually. And you can see the same thing on this farmland, how this farmland is shorter than like this glass block, which is a full block, as well as this path block. So therefore you can't place anything on top of any of these, but I definitely think they should go ahead and fix the soul sand as it's used in a lot of different mob farms. And it does visually look like it's a full block, but these guys all do have the full square area underneath. So you can place like levers and stuff underneath from the bottom, even though you can't place any of them on the sides. Now another strange block that is similar to Soul Sand that had a lot of changes throughout their versions. You guys seen that video where I talk about stuff that breaks per version. In 1.12, Soul Sand was changed. So it used to be able that having seven layers, you could place stuff on top of it like rails. And then they made it so only eight layers allowed you to place stuff on top of it. And then what they did, in 1.13, they removed both those abilities so you cannot place stuff on top of it if it's eight layers or seven layers. 
But ain't snow layers is very similar to soul sand, as in both of them look like they are the same height as a block right beside them. But if you actually do stand on these, you can see them clearly going down on the soul sand, and if it go to snow layers, you can see it go down as well. But both snow layers as well as soul sand allow you to walk between them without any difference. Now just like the soul sand had that nice solid bottom, so does snow layers. So these I just set block using a command. But you'll see that it's actually possible to place a lever on them, but as soon as it's on there, it will update it, in which it'll pop off. But you're not able to place anything on top or on the sides because collision-wise, it's smaller than a block. So next up is the hopper, and the hopper does have this weird shape on top. It does kind of look like it is a full square area, but it does have this indent in it. But in the versions, I went ahead and changed it so you can no longer place stuff like levers or like buttons on top of a hopper. You can still place stuff like rails as well as like repeaters. But it's actually not a surface like the other blocks, so something like glass you place like snow layers on, but you can't do this with hoppers. Now during a snapshot, it was possible to also place buttons underneath them, but when they remove placing buttons underneath them, they also remove placing them above them, which didn't make much sense. And stuff like even torches can go on top of glass, but can't go on top of hoppers. Now enchanting tables also have this nice surface underneath, so you can place in buttons. Blocks like pistons, you can always place like rails over the sides of them like this or directly on top of them as long as they keep this shape. So as soon as they get updated, you can see that this shape here changed. It's no longer that full surface, so it broke. This here did stay as a full surface, so it did not pop off. Now 1.13, they removed the ability to place buttons as well as levers on top of pistons, even though it was there in 1.12. They have brought it back again. So you could go ahead and when you're trying to break stuff, it's a lot easier if you just put like a button on top of it, then you update it. Otherwise you had to use pressure plates where you had to place them down and then hop on top of them. Notice how the pressure plates, they don't pop off when they're like this, but as soon as you get off of them, they'll update and pop off. You also can place them like on the pistons here, but it's actually not going to power them. And redstone torches don't actually update them either, which is kind of strange. But if you place a redstone torch uh, just diagonally, this will update them. Now having a cobble wall like this, where it's pointing all four direction might seem like a nice surface. But if you look closer, you can kind of see the actual lines of it go like this, and therefore you can't place anything on the bottom of it. Now, Daily Sensor have this nice bottom where you can place stuff with buttons as well as levers, but you can't place anything on top of the Daily Sensor because this surface is not up against the very edge, so it's not like at the very top here or the very side here. Now, cauldrons kind of seem like they have a full surface, but you can see these legs, and if you go in between them, they're actually different collisions, so I can go up in here, and once I'm inside, you can see I'm colliding with these different things. And that's one of the things I actually forgot when I built this list of different blocks. One of the things I forgot was the cauldron as well as bed and legs, and they are over here. So this is the cauldron size as well as the bed size. So the bed is actually the same size as like the door, and the cauldron's the same size as cauldrons and hoppers. But if you notice, the cauldron does have this surface very similar to like the hoppers over there. We know the hoppers could have rails on top of them. So you can actually place rails on top of hoppers and you can still walk inside of them and fall down into the little bottom piece here. But it still won't let you place stuff like buttons or like levers. But you can put stuff in like pressure plates in here. So you can have something that's inside here that's pressing down in it. And I'm not exactly sure what you can do with it, but it does look kind of cool as like a little top to it. Oh yeah, iron one looks pretty good. Or you can put like repeaters. So you can like compact your redstone a little bit by having repeaters go over top of it. Now, along with glass, there is some other unique kind of blocks. So you got like your seed lanterns as well as your glowstone. And mango blocks also have some unique properties. So you guys probably remember that redstone can go on top of glowstone. It can also now go on top of sea lanterns as well. And magma cubes are very similar to like a solid block as you can put like power through them. The only real difference with magma blocks is that mobs normally won't spawn on top of them unless they are resistant to fire damage. But when it comes to suffocation, the glass won't suffocate them, but the glowstone as well as the seed lantern still will. Where back in the day, they never used to be able to do that. But now you can also place other stuff on them, so like levers and other similar things. Another unique block is uh, beacons, as they are very similar to glass. So now you can also place redstone on top of them as well, or any other blocks that's similar to them. Like you can place levers up against the side or underneath them, because they all have that nice full square surface. So redstone will still not go through them as they are transparent. Now composters are very similar to cauldrons, except they actually have that full cube on pretty much all their sides except for the top, which has this hole in it. But you can go ahead and place stuff on these sides and underneath as well. And you can even go and place stuff on top, like the same things you can place on the cauldron as well as the hoppers, which is really cool. So you can definitely do some neat looking stuff with these uh, composters, not only for aesthetics, but also for compacting. Now besides trap doors, there's also normal doors. And Zoom showed me this really cool trick to do with doors where you place a lever on the door and then power it. 
and it will actually open and close super fast and then the lever will pop off. Now you can't actually see the door opening and close because it happens so fast, but I can actually stick observer up to it and the observer will actually put off a pulse when I update the door. You see that pulse there? This means you can place other things on doors. You can't place them on this side because this side isn't up against the edges. So stuff like vines and like ladders can all be placed up against them. Wooden doors also have this property. So you can place like buttons on them and you can power them and they'll do that really quick flickering as well. Now if you power the door in a special state, then you can go ahead and place levers on them and power them. This is something that Theosa, one of the project members, uh, showed me. You can kind of do some fun stuff with trap doors as well. So you can go ahead and do the same thing with the lever. It'll pop off, but you can just go ahead and place pressure plates on the trap door. So if I stand on it, then hold shift and then click there with the pressure plate, you see it instantly will pop off and it actually flickers the trap door super fast. And if I hold down right click, you can see how it just instantly will pop off the pressure plate as soon as it's placed down. Because what's happening is it's getting placed on it and then my player is updating the pressure plate, which is causing the trap door to close and this is what causing it to pop off. But it opens uh, just as fast and that's what allows it to do that quick updating and also causes it to pop off. Now TNT also has these nice surfaces and it was possible to place redstone on TNT and then they removed it, but it's also back again. One thing that you can never really do is like place levers on TNT, but now you can, or you can place like redstone torches on them. And these actually don't update the TNT block. Now there was a really old trick where you could shift click and place flame blocks on the TNT, which would cause it not to ignite. And it looks like this trick is still in the game, but it seems that it eventually does update, even if I have string around it so the fire doesn't actually spread before the flame would just stay there and never update it. Now Observer is one of those unique blocks where you could place like redstone on the sides and it looks like it's going up one side and down the other side. But what's really happening is it's acting very much like a slab where the redstone goes up one side but never comes down the other side. But even though it acts like a slab, you can still place blocks such as levers on the sides of them, which is a bit strange because it's like telling you that it is full cube, but the redstone can't go over top of it. But you cannot place like ladders on the sides, so it's a bit unique in that way. So there's some other unique blocks like campfires, which have that nice surface, coarse flower, which actually is a full block, even though it visually doesn't look like it. If you actually bump up against it, you can see this line here. So you can place all sorts of stuff up against it, like ladders and even pressure plates on the top of it. And this block here is actually a monster block, uh, but now they call them infested blocks. And these are the ones that silverfish are inside of, and you can get these in survival by having silverfish go inside of it, or you can just find them in the creative menu right down here. And I went ahead and tested these, but they do act like normal blocks. Now, one thing that is different, and they changed this one at 13, it used to be able, you could go around and see which blocks had uh, silverfish went in by trying to break them because they would break a little bit differently the normal stone, but now they made them so that as soon as you click on them, they'll instantly break so you can no longer use that little test to see if there's silverfish inside of them. Another new block to 1.14 is this here, which is the scaffolding. And if you've seen those older videos I did, I showed where you could put like levers on the side of them and stuff, but they went ahead and fixed all that. But now we do have this nice surface on the top here where you can place stuff like torches or like your levers or like rails, repeaters or pressure plates. And some things like pressure plates, which don't collide with the player, mean you could walk right through them or like rails, they don't collide with the player. So you can actually place rails there and then walk right through it. Now things like cobwebs, you can see these nice surfaces here. But you can't actually place anything on these surfaces. But one thing that they did change in past version, it wasn't possible to place torches on all sides of like pumpkins as well as jack-o'-lanterns. But now because of this change, pretty much every side is treated the same. So you can go ahead and do that again. Now ladders technically have this nice surface if they were floating like this. So you would think it's possible to place like a ladder up against a ladder and it actually is. So you can actually get double ladders <laughs> And this can actually be done in survival. If you've seen that video where I showed you how you can actually get floating ladders in survival. I actually did a couple different videos showing how you can get floating ladders in survivals, but I'll put those down in the description if you're curious. But yeah, it's also possible to get double-sided floating ladders in survival. Now vines are also kind of similar to ladders, but the cool thing about vines is you can go ahead and place them on blocks like this, and then you can go ahead and remove them. That way you can get the vines to be nice and long without having to wait for them to grow. But they do have this nice surface on the back, 
if I go ahead and try to click on the back, you see I'm not able to place anything on these. So they have properties that are a little bit different. Now one thing they did change about vines is that you can now climb them even if they don't have a block behind them. They actually added this in 1.13, you just come up to them and then press space bar. And if you're underneath the block, then you'll kind of get stuck with this, but you can kind of push your way out and then you can continue climbing them. And you can actually climb up to the block above them from the vine, so they're actually more useful now. So you can have like a sky base way up in the air and you can have a nice little vine ladder going up to it. This is a really cool trick and I really had a lot of fun during the stream messing around with this with you guys that joined our server where we were testing this. Now if you guys don't know, during our Snapchat servers, you guys can actually join the server and mess around with different stuff very similar to this while I'm streaming. So be sure to go ahead and follow me there on Twitch. I'll put the link down in the description. And I'll go ahead and provide the world download to this down in the description as well. So you guys can go ahead and mess around with it. If you guys know of anything that you want me to test with this, or if you guys discover something else with this, go ahead and message me. You can do that through my Twitter or through my Discord. Both will be linked down below. There you have it guys, some new 1.14 tricks. If you guys did find this interesting, show this video with a like. Be sure to share it with someone else. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.